Hello, everybody. Gage says it's empty. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Hopefully this is going to be a big treat. This is a beer I picked up uh, uh, at the Brew Pub from Cigar City uh, down in uh, in Tampa while I was there. Met up with the uh, uh, the manager there at the Brew Pub, Russell, and uh, uh, very, very nice gentleman. Uh, was super hospitable uh, while we were there. So, uh, I mean... Uh, He's a top-notch guy, and they uh, they do some pretty tasty beers over at the brew pub. They do different beers at the brewery than they do at the brew pub. So uh, they got two different locations that they're brewing beer. So, and the beers are, uh, that they do at the brew pub are available there. And of course, they have some of the other. I think they had Highlight or something. I don't remember now, but they have the brewery tanks and stuff there at the brew pub. And of course, they brew Highlight, several other ones at at the Cigar City Brewery there in Tampa too. So. Two very nice locations and different beers at both places, so very nice. And the brew pub has some awesome food. We went up there and had dinner one evening, and uh, and uh, it was very tasty. It was very very tasty. Probably probably one of the best Cuban sandwiches I've ever tasted. So uh, let's see what the beer brings. This is uh, Cigar City's Iron O'Rourke's God of Beer Stout. And this beer is in a tribute to San Black Church. And uh, it is a pretty big beer coming in at 11.7% alcohol. I don't have the IBUs listed for the beer and it's not on the bottle. There may be a date on the bottle. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing anything on the label. And it's right out of the fridge and it's sweating already. Uh, and this is a bomber. It's a 22 ouncer. So... Uh, I'm anxious to see. I have not tried this this beer yet. They didn't have it on tap uh, at the brew pub, so uh, they had it in the bottle in, in the uh, in the cooler there, and I picked up one uh, just to review for you guys. So, uh, commercial description on this beer says there is more to there is more to it than this. The light that slipped away through your fist, dark thoughts, intensity. Look what we found here. Behold, our beloved God of fear. Intimidating, slightly burnt and bitter, full of regret and guilt. To friends known as life, decadent, unrestrained. What's heavier than this? God of fear. It is a big stout loaded with roasted grain, coffee, and minor chocolate notes. Sounds tasty to me. Yes. Uh, food pairings for this. Uh, going over to your stout food pairings and they usually say chocolate or digestive or, 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 uh, or asp teeth or something like that. This particular one says, hmm, this particular one says, cheeses of buttery brie gouda Havarti Swiss. Uh, it does have chocolate and digestive. The meat is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass right of pint, Becker Night Tumbler, Snifter, oversized wine glass. I got this solid beer glass here, and it says it can be solid for long periods, and I'm sure that it can, being a stout, 11.7%. This is going to keep for quite a while. And I could have just as easily shoved this in the fridge uh, and kept it for several years, uh, but I wanted to review it since I have not had it. Uh, whether it's a little bit boozy fresh like it is, and I know it's pretty fresh because it comes right from the brewery. So uh, I don't I don't know if it's going to have a date on it. We'll check when we come back for the final show and see if there's a bottled on date stamped on it somewhere. I was thinking Cigar City did does date their stuff, but uh, they may date the stuff at the at the brewery and not the brew pub. So I don't know if they have the dating machine at both places. So we'll see here in a little bit. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about, guys. So. I'm pretty anxious to get the top off of this and get it in the glass. 
Nice fellow here. I'm expecting this to be black as night. It's got a little bit of red ribbing just coming out of the bottle, but I got a feeling it's not going to show that red ribbiness in the glass. All right, about a finger of head on that pour. Looks pretty good. Over to the light. Through the big part of the glass, it is it is black. I'm not getting anything. But through the thin part of the bottom of the glass here, guys, I can see the bulb through it. It is a, a rich red ruby color. But I'm not getting it through the big part of the glass. So through the thin part, I can see through it. So it's not pitch black like mother oil. It is a deep red ruby as it poured out of the bottle into the glass, but the thickness of the glass makes it look a little darker. But then part, I can see through. Let's get a nose on it. Oh, I'm getting that rich, roasty, almost to the burnt uh, stage of the malt. I'm not getting a big booziness. I mean, it's not like it's a bourbon barrel aged version or anything like that where you're going to get that influence from the, from the barrel. So I'm not getting the alcohol on the nose right now, but it's right out of the fridge. A little bit of coffee, a little bit of toffee, or, or maybe some brown sugar in there. Uh, maybe a hint of some licorice in there. Very nice smelling stout. Very nice smelling. Well, let's give it a taste. See what we got. Cheers, everybody. Let's get it on. Nice bitterness on the back end. A lot of these really big stouts and stuff will be almost sweet like like a barley wine. But this one has got just the right amount of bittering on the back end to match up with that heavy malt grain to produce an 11.7% stout. That is very nice. That is very, very nice. Very easy drinking for an 11.7%. Well, I can't believe how well hidden that alcohol is to be as fresh as it is. Well, that is very, very tasty. Very, very tasty. And this is, like I said, this is a bomber. So uh, I got enough in the bottle to share with the other half, pour her a glass. I'm going to sip on this for probably 35, 45 minutes, something like that. Might even fire up a cigar stick. And uh, cigar, yeah, it's a cigar city beer. It's only appropriate to have a cigar with a cigar city beer, don't you think? And uh, we'll come back here and uh, do the final chug and grade on this one. Looks pretty impressive. Definitely looks, seems. Uh, tastes like an A beer to me now when it's cold. So let's let it warm up and see uh, if it changes any and any of those other notes come out or, or if we can detect anything else when I come back. But right now it's pretty tasty. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Been sipping on about 45 minutes or so. Very nice. Very, very nice beer. The, 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 the roasted malt is almost to the burnt characteristics there. Hints of coffee, licorice. Molasses, brown sugar, uh, just a slight hint of some chocolate in there now that it's warmed up, uh, and a slight hint of the alcohol. Uh, it's not no, it's not burning or doing anything like that. Uh, for something that's not bourbon barrel aged or, or barrel aged beer, it's very very tasty. Probably one of the best that I've had. Uh, there is no date on the bottle anymore. This has come directly from the brew pub. I'm pretty sure it's a 2015 edition. Uh, but being at 11.7%, this beer is going to keep for a long, long time. And uh, uh, I just would like to see them put a, put a year on the label. This is a 2015 edition, 2014 edition, or whatever. Just so you know, for cellaring purposes, uh, uh, or if it sits on a shelf somewhere. This one hadn't, because it comes directly from the brew pub. But just in case it happens to get to a, a beer store and, and sit on a shelf, you'd know what vintage it is. So. It's the only fuss I have about this beer not having a year on it somewhere. But uh, other than that, it's pretty freaking awesome. It's pretty tasty. 
for a non barrel aged beer it's it is bright tasty. So final choke. Very nice. Very, very, very nice beer. Went very well with the cigar that I popped on a little bit uh, while I was letting this warm up to room temperature. Uh, guys, uh, if you get a chance to get down to Tampa, visit Cigar City Brewery, and especially go over to uh, the brew pub up there on Dale Mabry uh, Boulevard. Uh, I think it's a boulevard. Uh, the, uh, the brew pub is very, very nice. Uh, uh, Russell, the uh, the manager there, was very, he was super hospitable, very friendly, uh, easy to talk to, very, very nice man, very, very nice man. So a big shout out to, to, to Russell for, for, for the hospitality that he showed there. And I'll give you this little hint that we had dinner there and the wife got a Cuban sandwich and she was blown away by this. And we had several Cuban sandwiches at different places while we were in Tampa. And uh, it was by far the best Cuban sandwich I probably have ever had or ever tasted. And she agrees that it, it was pretty damn awesome. She was so impressed. She's trying to find uh, a Cuban br uh, bread bakery around here where she can buy the Cuban bread and make the Cuban sandwiches here. She was that impressed with it. So uh, I'll have to find it. I've looked online already and uh, the uh, the machines, the presses that do them sandwiches are not cheap. I mean, of course, you can take a, uh, an iron skillet and a, and a, and a tin foil wrapped brick or a two skillets and, put, and press it down and do that. But the machine that actually is made to, to do that kind of sandwich is kind of pricey. It's three, four, five hundred dollars for one of those machines. So I don't know if we'll be seeing one of those in the household anytime soon. Might have to get another iron skillet or, or wrap a brick of tin foil and try it doing that way. But it was awesome sandwich. So if you get down there, go to the brew pub, Cigar City Brew Pub up on Dale Mabry, and uh, give the Cuban sandwich a try. It's pretty freaking awesome. It's pretty tasty. Best one I've ever tasted. So, with that being said, uh, guys, the beer for me it's a, it's a nine out of ten. Even though it has no date on it, it's eleven point seven percent stout. It's going to keep for many years, five, ten, fifteen years. It's not going to go bad, and more than likely, it's just going to get a little bit better with age. So, uh, kind of wish I'd picked up two of them now, one to do and, uh, now, and one to sell for a while, but I didn't. Hindsight's so always twenty twenty on this kind of stuff, though, guys. Uh, that's the way it goes. Might have to give Russell a call so if he'll send me one. <laughs> uh, over to uh, Beer Advocate, they say 90 in the outstanding range. I think it's a little better than that. If I was putting a numeric rating on this, it'd probably be a 96 or a 97. It's pretty tasty. And over to Rake Beer, it says no score requires more ratings. So I don't know if this is something new that they've come out with uh, or, or what the deal is on the particular uh, beer that they're doing. Uh, but it hasn't been reviewed by very many people. Matter of fact, it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine. It's got nine reviews. To me, guys, that's enough for them to put a rating on it. I don't know what the requirements are, how many people got to post comments or reviews on this beer before they'll actually put a rating on it. Nine people have reviewed it. 3.5433. One guy has a 2.6, so he's, he's an idiot. 4.136413438. So, uh, on a scale of five, those are all pretty excellent numbers there, guys. So, very tasty beer from uh, Cigar City, uh, directly from the Brew Pub. This is their Iron O'Rourke's God of Fear Stout, a tribute to Sam Black Church. If you've had this one, guys, let me know what you think of it. And let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See everybody then.